I'm going to demonstrate installing Ubuntu Linux inside VirtualBox. This assumes you've got VirtualBox already installed. I've got VirtualBox open here. We can see the VirtualBox manager. What I'll do is I'll download the Linux image and load it in VirtualBox and go through the Ubuntu installation procedure. Uh, the Linux image to get, there are different mirrors available to uh, download. The one I'm going to use is the RNet mirror, which is uh, probably the fastest within the Australian University network. I'll go to Ubuntu and we look for releases. And in this case, I'm looking for a specific version, 16.04.3. And we're going to install the server version, not the desktop. So it's going to be command line only. So I scroll down looking for server version and there's AMD 64 and i386, 64-bit operating systems are referred to as AMD 64, so that's what we want. Ubuntu 16.04.3, server edition AMD 64, we want the ISO image, like it's a CD image, 825 megabytes. We save that and it's downloading, it's taking a, a few minutes. Uh, I've already got this downloaded so we can bypass those few minutes and immediately load it up. So what we need to do in VirtualBox is create uh, a new machine and give it a name. I'm going to just call it Linux Demo but you should give it a more meaningful name maybe about the Ubuntu uh, server version and in fact if we include Ubuntu in the name you see that uh, VirtualBox detects uh, the, the most common version Ubuntu 64-bit type Linux and next we need to choose the amount of memory we're going to allocate that uh, Ubuntu Linux machine it's defaulting to 1024 megabytes a gigabyte my computer has 8 gigabytes. This would be fine, but I'm actually going to drop it down to 512. I could possibly try 256 megabytes. Since we're just running a cut down server with no GUI, you'd probably get by with 256. But with 512, uh, it should be fine. The problem with having larger is that uh, if I want to run multiple machines at the same time, then I start to use up some of my 8 gigabytes of memory and things may slow down. So 512 is a good compromise. We need a disk for this virtual machine, so let's create a hard disk now and use a default virtual box disk image. And you can choose either dynamically or fixed size. Fixed size is generally faster to operate but takes some, some time and space up uh, up front. Because I'm going to, going to use a small disk, we'll use fixed size. And I'll just keep the same name. I won't use the default location. I'm going to set it to, let's say, uh, two and a half gig. Okay. We could probably get down to two gig, not a problem. Uh, two and a half, we'll see later, we'll, we'll have a, some swap space automatically created, which will use up some of that. So that creates a disk image file in VirtualBox. It takes a few seconds, uh, that 2.5 gigabyte file. And then we uh, are set up. We have a new machine created. Uh, we haven't done anything with it yet. You note it's powered off. So we'll have a look at the settings before we do anything with it and boot a machine. If we right click on the uh, virtual machine and choose settings, we can see some of the things we can change for this uh, virtual machine. Most of the settings we won't change, so we'll quickly go through some of them. Uh, the uh, name, the type we set before, the, the folders and description are not needed. If we go to system, there's a few things of importance there. Uh, it refers to the amount of memory, so we can change that later. We've got uh, half a gig. RAM, we could increase that later. Uh, the boot order, some details about the chipset used or, or emulated by VirtualBox. The processor, we have a single processor uh, allocated to this virtual machine. 
When you have a, a, a quad-core CPU, you essentially have four uh, processors in your computer. And what you could do is you could allocate multiple of those to a particular virtual machine. In this case, because the server edition of Ubuntu is, is quite low on resource consumption, we don't need anything special here. Acceleration uh, allows the, the uh, or VirtualBox to use some of the features of the, the chipset and the, the instruction set inside the Intel or AMD CPU in your host computer. And if you can enable the VTX or AMD V, then generally that will give you better performance. They're not necessary, but hardware, hardware virtualization will generally give much better performance than software virtualization. Enable them if you can. If you're using your own computer, you may have to change some BIOS settings to turn them on. We're going to use a command line uh, operating system, so the video display is not, a, not of interest to us. It's allocated 16 megabytes, it, we could change it. it, it won't make any difference. The storage, it's re referring to our hard disk we've created. Uh, we can add new disks. For example, we want to boot from the CD when we first start up, so we could do that later, but we could actually do it now. We can choose a disk to boot from. So I'll choose the virtual optical disk file and try and find my downloaded ISO image. Here it is. So the, the, file, the 840 megabyte file we downloaded before that will act as the disk inside our CD drive. So when the machine boots first, it will boot from the disk. Most of the other settings we don't need to change. The audio we don't care about with command line. Serial ports, no. USB, the default ones. Shared folders, user interface. The one thing we should look at is the network settings. Firstly note that VirtualBox allows you to emulate your guest machine having multiple network adapters. Uh, for example, imagine you've got uh, two LAN cards in a PC or in a server, we can enable two adapters. By default, adapter one is enabled, the other adapters are disabled. VirtualBox allows you to connect from your guest machine to the host machine and out to the internet in different ways. By default, it's network address translation but we're going to change that and the manual for VirtualBox has a good description so here's the help page or the, uh, on virtual networking there's a good explanation of the different modes that are available so it's worth reading through uh, this table gives an overview we're currently using NAT as the default option that allows quite easily my virtual machine to communicate out to the internet say for web browsing or sending emails it's a little bit more complicated if I want to allow someone on the internet to connect into a server on my virtual machine in this fourth column. I need to set up port forwarding to get that to work. It's possible, but we need to do some additional setup. If I have two virtual machines inside VirtualBox, they can't talk to each other. And there's no direct communications between the virtual machine and the host. In some cases, we'd like to have multiple virtual machines talk to each other and make it easier to communicate between the virtual machine and the host, as well as allow computers on the internet to access our virtual machine. So we're going to use bridge mode. Another option is internal mode, which is a little bit more secure or safer than bridge mode. So you may consider that. Uh, but again, it requires a little bit of extra setup for port forwarding. So we'll go for the simple bridge mode in this case. We'll set that and bridge adapter and the name. These are adapters available from your host computer. Note there's a wireless adapter in my uh, laptop and the Broadcom, Broadcom Gigabit Ethernet adapter, which I'm currently using for uh, network access. Choose the one that you're going to use for internet access and be careful there if uh, you uh, plug in a LAN cable and previously you've chosen wireless then you may lose network connectivity inside your guest machine. The other default settings should be sufficient. 
So we've to choose to bridge, chosen a bridge adapter. And now let's boot our machine. So my machine is currently powered off. I start the machine and that's going to boot up my virtual machine. Remember, it's going to load up the CD, which was in the, which we specified, which contains the uh, downloaded ISO image that we used. We'll choose our installation language, English. And before we go to installing the Ubuntu server, there is one thing that we need to change. Note down the bottom, there are some options. We can choose a mode, in particular F4, allows us to choose to install not the server as if on real hardware, but install a minimal virtual machine, which only installs software which is needed to run inside VirtualBox or any virtual uh, virtualization software. If you didn't do that, it would be okay, but uh, that may uh, save a little bit of space. Then we install the server. And while that's getting started, I'll just minimize some of my windows and we'll focus on here. Uh, so we, I'll go through some of these steps very quickly. I'll just choose the, the options. Some of them will stop and explain. So the language we choose, the uh, country we're in, uh, the keyboard, let's choose a just English standard keyboard. Now it's going to detect some hardware which is presented by VirtualBox and it's uh, checking the CD-ROM there and it should move on to the next step in a moment. Remembering that uh, what we need to do is we'll need to choose some options of where to install Ubuntu on which disk and in this case we have a single disk, that 2.5 gigabyte disk that we started uh, or we created when we created a new machine. So it's setting up the components uh, which uh, are important for the base operating system and then the other steps that we'll need to do and, and take care in is choosing a username and password, the, the login. Uh, we need to choose some software or, or some uh, different configurations and also get networking working. So there it was detecting network hardware. It, because we've chosen bridge mode, it should uh, work correctly there and automatically get an IPv6 or an, an IPv4 address from my network in this case the university network. So that proceeded okay. Here's my first option, choose a host name, choose a name for our computer. It defaults to Ubuntu, but I'm just gonna call mine for this demo. You can choose a more meaningful name. And now a username, and you can give your full name there. Sorry, that was the, the full name of the, the, the user. Now, this is the username that you'll use for login. Uh, I'll leave mine as Stephen. You can choose another one. Choose a password. And note that when I type, it shows stars. Here, if I want to show, which I normally wouldn't do, I'm using student. Now, that's an insecure password. I've just chosen that for this demo. You should generally think about choosing uh, stronger passwords for your uh, servers. And type it in again. It's a weak password. Yes, I'm okay with this because I'm not going to use this machine. I'm going to, after I create it in the demo, I'm going to delete it again. There's no need to encrypt our home directory. We're going to use this as a server. Uh, so no. It gets the time, it tries to work out what time zone I'm in and via the network and hopefully it will choose that I'm in Australia and in Queensland or the time zone pointing to Brisbane. Australia, Queensland, yes this is correct. Now it's going to detect what disks because soon I need to choose uh, where to install uh, Ubuntu. And this can be quite complicated. How to partition disks and, and setting up those partitions to, to store all your file system. There are different options. Guided, use the entire disk. Remembering I've got a 2.5 gigabyte disk. So wipe out anything on that disk 
and install on top of that uh, Ubuntu. If you were installing Ubuntu on your laptop but not inside VirtualBox, you need to be careful here and make sure you don't overwrite Windows, for example. But here in VirtualBox, we're safe. There's nothing else installed. There are other options like using Logical Volume Management, LVM, and encryption, which will avoid, at this, at this stage, we may discuss them in a later topic. So I'm going to use the entire disk. It's detected that there's a 2.7 gigabyte. Be careful of the rounding there. Disk, yes, yeah, select the disk to partition, and it will automatically determine a partitioning. And it's going to say, create two partitions on that disk, split it into two parts. One part is referred to as using the uh, format ext4, and that's going to be the main hard drive, probably about two gigabytes. And then the swap space is for virtual memory. We're going to keep the default and write the changes to disk. It may be useful taking a screenshot of uh, these settings so you can recall them at later stages. Write the change to disk so it sets up and now it uh, starts installing the system. So installing the software on those disks or on that disk in those partitions. Okay, it's asked, do we want to use a proxy? Generally, that will be no, we'll just continue. And now it's uh, may download some additional files to install. So, uh, and that may take probably the longest of, of all of these phases of installation. Uh, quite fast in this case, though, it's, it's gonna take a few seconds so we can sit and wait. Uh, so it may download software that we don't have in the uh, CD image, but I suspect most of it's already there. Okay, now it's asking, do I want to have automatic security updates? Uh, generally, you would uh, want to set up automatic security updates, but we may do that at a later stage. So for simplicity, I'm going to say no automatic updates. We can see how that can be done within the operating system uh, later. And now it's saying, do I want to install some additional software while I'm here? And again, we'll do that later. What I'll just do is choose the basic Ubuntu server and then continue. We'll show how to manually install things like the OpenSSH server, the LAMP server in a later stage. And it starts uh, retrieving those files either from uh, the included ISO or from the internet and installing the uh, packages. So it's installed those packages and now I've got to the stage where it's installed Grub. And Grub is the bootloader. So the, the operation of your computer is that the BIOS, when you, you boot the computer, the BIOS uh, runs first and then that loads some special software which will then load the operating system. And that special software is a bootloader and in Linux, it's commonly, we use the Grub bootloader. This is important when you install multiple operating systems on the one computer. But here we're using VirtualBox and our one computer has just Ubuntu Linux on it. So we can choose the default option and yes, install on the master boot record. If you're installing direct on your laptop, you'd need to be careful there and think about the different options for installing Grub. And it's now finishing off the installation. So uh, setting the clock, probably remove some, some uh, software or, or files that are not necessary, do the final updates, and then we should be good to go. There we are, installation complete. It's time to boot your new system. So let's continue and give it a try. So it's called to reboot and that triggers uh, to shut down and boot up again. And it's, that was that screen that we saw for a couple of seconds was Grub choosing Ubuntu. It automatically chose it because there's only one operating system to choose. Now it's going through the boot process, 
giving us some output and now we have our system up and running and we can log in. It notes that we've got Ubuntu 16.04.3. The name of the machine is Demo. It's asking us for a login username. Mine was Stephen. And my password, in my case student, you would have a secure one. Note that when you type your password, it's not shown, but it's being entered. And there I am, I'm logged in. Welcome to Ubuntu. The next thing we need to do is look at uh, updating the system, setting it up, and learning how to use the command line. The, before we do all that, we may shut down the machine, and you can do that via the, via the menu. We can cause a, call a shutdown, like pressing the power button on your computer, but we should do a software or graceful shutdown inside the operating system. And our first command we'll introduce you to is the shutdown or power off. Pseudo power off, ask for my password, and then it goes through the close down process and is powered off that machine. Our Ubuntu Linux server has been installed inside VirtualBox, set up and run. 